Word often has screw ups when it comes to formatting. For example, sometimes you've got a title that's not with the next paragraph that's for some reason in a different page, or maybe it will end early and the next paragraph won't be for three quarters of the page. Or you've got some bullet lists or some numbered lists that have weird alignment and adjustments. Sometimes you have the weird paragraph settings like hanging formats where the first line appears differently to the rest. You just want to get rid of these. This happens way too much in Word. And in this video, I'm going to show you 22 ways that you can manage these things or useful in different contexts. My name is Dave and I'm and I have tons of videos on Excel, Word, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So I highly encourage you to check out my other videos for that. So firstly, if you have some text like this and you just want to get rid of the excess formatting that is associated with it, you can press on this button. A lot of people don't know it exists. If you click on that, it will take you back to the original formatting and it can even work when you've got a mix of formatting like this. It also has a shortcut associated with it, which is control and space, but that doesn't clear the paragraph formatting as we can see here. Now that is something that um, is a combination of these paragraph marks, but often for me, these things are in the wrong way. For example, this hanging style where you have the first line is at the start, and then it goes kind of indented inwards for every other line. Uh, the next paragraph shows an opposite of that, which is the first line format. This is fairly common, you'll see in books and literature, but the first one, I don't think I've ever seen it. So how can you very quickly change this? Well, there is only a shortcut that I know of that does this, so very, very important, Control Q. Control Q will get rid of the paragraph formatting, but not the font formatting, Control Q over here does the same thing. What about if you want to get rid of both in one go? Well, you can do that with another shortcut, which is the shortcut for going into normal style. I'll talk about styles in a minute because they are super, super useful with this thing. So control shift N will go into normal style and normal style usually has your built in clear formats and your built in clear paragraph formats, but not exactly. So it's good to know all of those combinations. Now, in this example, I'll show you that it doesn't always get rid of everything. So you do need to know the three of them. So if I click on normal, which is the same as control shift N, it will still give me some of these things. So I'll need to do clear all formatting with that. And often you'll need to do the paragraph stuff with control Q as well. All right. So um, some other stuff which is useful also uh, to quickly select things is if I click on this text and I want to quickly select all the text with the same formatting. In the select drop down, you have this one. Not many people know about it, but it can be really, really useful. I will select all the text with a similar formatting. Then I can, for example, make them into another color or change the font or do whatever I want or even clear the formats with control space like that. Uh, another thing that you can do if you have some formatting that you like and you want to apply this to other things, most people know about the format painter. You can click on that and then you can click on something else. But very few people know the advanced stages of it, which is you can actually double click it. If you double click it, then you can take it to multiple places. It essentially locks in place your format until you either click that or press the escape button on your keyboard. Control Alt C is the keyboard shortcut for copy formats and Control Alt V is the shortcut for paste formats. It's kind of like Control C is copy, Control V is paste. Add in formats, you add in alt, and it does the same thing. So I have copied this format, which means that I can paste formats like that. So let's work on headings next. So what I'm going to do is make all my headings a certain style. So I'm going to make them all into this blue color, and I'm going to make them a different font like this one, and I'm also going to make them bigger and put them in the middle like that. So now I want all of my headings to be the same thing. So I'm going to show you this trick. The styles are super useful to understand, but you only need to know a little bit about them to get them working. So if you click on this, it will apply that heading style to this. I'm going to control Z undo that because I want to make this my standard heading. So you're really easy. What you do is you right click this and you choose update heading one to match selection. Now that hasn't done anything because none of my other things are heading one, but um, I'm going to make everything into the heading by selecting one and going to select text with similar formatting and then clicking on heading one. And then in 
about two seconds, all of your headings are the same thing. Now, this is really, really useful. There are a bunch of things that you can do with this kind of heading. So um, just to show you the navigation pane, which pops up either when you go to find or if you go to view and choose navigation pane, pops up on the left. And then here you have all of your headings. Now, often what sometimes you'll see happen is that you'll have something like this, which also becomes heading one accidentally. And then you'll see a gap like that. If you see a, what I call a ghost heading, all you have to do is click on it and press the delete button on your keyboard and it will get rid of that. Now, what we do have is we have some twos as well as some ones and we have a title. Titles are usually different. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to one of the twos, which could be this one. And then we're going to make this into a heading two. So a similar idea. Let's make this just black and underlined and on the left and a smaller font. That's going to be fine. And then in the similar way, we're going to right click on heading two and update to match section. Then every time we have two, I'm going to click on there and choose heading two. There are also shortcuts. Control Alt two will be heading two. Control Alt one will be heading one. Uh, Control Alt three will be three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So Control Alt two will be like that. That's heading one. That's fine. This one's heading two. Uh, and keep going with that one. Here we go. Control Alt two. I really like those shortcuts. Title, titles are usually different. So you do have a built-in title if you just want to click that, or you can add your own. A title you'll see does not show up in the headings because it does not count as headings. You can also collapse and expand these here, or you can also collapse and expand the entire section like that in the main body of your document. And this shows you this line to indicate that. Not something I read, I often use the expand collapse, but it is that. Another super useful thing that you can do when you have your header styles only is if you go to the references tab and you choose table of contents, choose one that you like, and it will automatically put in a table of contents that's actually linked to all of your things with the indentations for level two, level one, etc. And it is updated live. So let's say that over here, I added a new heading. So I'm going to call this heading two subheading and I'm going to click on it and I'm going to go to heading two over here. Or even I could do heading three if I wanted to. Um, change that to three so it's pretty obvious what's happening. You can see the extra indentation. And if I want to update it, I can click on update and I can update. Usually I do an update entire table and now it's got the three underneath there as well. All right, so that's heading styles. Styles get so much more complicated in terms of what you can do with the styles pane and all of these things. Uh, it is a combination of paragraph settings and character settings, font settings, but you don't need to know so much. There's so many things that you can do with them, but if you just know that right click to update and how to apply them, then I think that's most of what you need to know with headings. So another thing that you often find is that you've got your heading in one page and then it goes to the next page for when your paragraph starts. This is something that you almost always don't want. So this next thing is quite hidden, but it's really, really useful. You select your heading and then you go to paragraph and you go to line and page breaks and you choose this one, keep with next. That will mean that it will always go with the next paragraph. It doesn't have to be with a certain style. It can be on anything at all. But if we do want to keep this the same for all of the headings, for example, this one, what we do is we'll select this one, we'll right click again, and we'll do update heading to mass selection. And now we will do that for all of them. I do advise you doing this for your headings. Now, um, other things that you might want to be aware of are in the design tab. You have uh, a few different ways that you can change things. So firstly, if you choose one of these document formatting things, this will change everything, including the styles. So if I hover over them, you can see that my headings are changing style. And if I click on this one, for example, I go back to the home tab and now it's changed all my styles. I don't want that. So I'm going to control Z to undo that. If I want something a little bit more light then the themes will have essentially a color palette and a font that is standardized. So if I change this, it won't change my styles. As you can see, this is staying the same, but it will change everything else like that. Note that it is changing some of the colors, but not all. Um, let's go to a this one. 
and we'll see why. So this is kind of bluey, greeny ones. Now it's changed the colors up here in the theme colors, but the standard colors have not changed, which is why my reds and my oranges, which I chose from the standard colors, have stayed the same. Whereas if I control Z, we'll see that these two will change. The uh, styles will not change up here. All right, and then if you want something even lighter than that, you have colors and fonts here. So colors will just change the colors, but not the fonts. Again, same idea. It won't change the reds and the oranges, but it will change the other stuff. And fonts will just change the standard fonts, but not the things that I have in my predefined styles. Personally, I don't really use these that much. I find that it's fine with just changing the styles and doing everything else manually. But if you do want to have more flexibility on stuff, then that is useful there. So some selection tricks. If you click, you'll get just in between. Double click, you'll get a word. Triple click, you'll get the entire paragraph. Or if you go to the right of the margin and you click there, you'll get the entire line. If you double click it, you'll get the entire paragraph. So both of those are pretty useful to know. If you select with your keyboard, then shift and arrow will select one character at a time. Control shift will select one word at a time. And then shift down will select one line at a time. Control shift will select until the end of the paragraph. If you want this to be in the middle, you can click on there, as you probably know. But these shortcuts are actually really useful. Control L is left, Control R is right, Control E is center. Works in PowerPoint, Word, Outlook, but not Excel. So if you do those, then you can really speed up in how you're managing this text. Another really useful one is these things. So if you press Control Shift and shortcuts will show you like that. This will resize it up. Resize it down is the other way around. I use these all the time, particularly in PowerPoint where I have varying font sizes. That's so in Word, but uh, it is still quite useful. Change case is also nice. A lot of people don't know this exists. So you can click on there and get these things that you want. Sentence case is only at the beginning of the sentence. Uh, but in advanced formatting options, you can also have another option called small caps, which looks like this, where you have it in capitals, but it's not quite the same as everything else. So another thing that is useful to know about is this ruler here. And if you don't see it, go to the View tab and turn it on or off like this. Once you've got it like that, then you can control where things start and end by dragging these. So if you want to end it early, you can do that. If you want to start it late, you can drag this. And the first top one is about the first line before or after. Personally, I never really use these because I find it does get messy. But if you want to go back to the normal text, then you can just select the paragraph, go to the Home tab and click on Normal, uh, which is the style, or Control shift and we'll do that as well. You got a list that could be either a numbered or a bullet list. It's slightly different. The first one will do that, and this one will drag it back. Note that you have to multi-select if you want it to apply to all of them, like that. And if you have something that has a sub-list, uh, then it doesn't qu work quite as well, but you'll need to click on Normal or Control-Shift-N, and then click back here. Tab to put it indented, and then not many people know this, but if you want to go back, it's Shift-Tab like this. So that can be really useful to know. Now, what about if you are in a new position and you want to make a new list? Then what you can do is you can just type in one like that and you can then press enter and it does that. But what about if you don't want this to happen? So if you type in new list, one new list, and you get this and you don't want it to continue, you can press undo automatic numbering. And then it just keeps it as is and you can keep trying as you want. And this is quite good if you want a paragraph in between before you go into your next one. Now, if you don't want it to happen for a long time, you can just stop automatically doing it. But I wouldn't necessarily advise that because then it's hard to get it back. Um, what you need to do to get it back is File, Options, Proofing, Autocorrect Options. See, I told you it was hidden. Auto Format as you type. And then here, you will choose Automatic Numbered Lists. So you need to do all of this back to get it back after that. Uh, bullet lists, if you want to start one, you can either click on there, or I love this keyboard shortcut, Control-Shift-L, will create a bullet list like that. And also you can tab or Shift-Tab to go forward and back. Let's look at copy and paste options. So I've copied something and I want to paste it. So you have three options here, but if you do Control-V, then it automatically comes up with one and you can switch them. 
but this is keep text only. This is the safest if you just want to apply that to your formatting. This will keep the source formatting, which looked like that with different fonts and different bullets and other things. Or you can choose this one, which is merge formatting. And this will kind of try and take the formatting from your existing document, which is the fonts, the sizes, and things like that. Other page issues that can happen is something like this, where you've got two blank lines. So this starts really, really far down. Now, what probably happened was that the person who was writing this had it looking like this. And in order to get this to go to the next page, they pressed enter, 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 and that had worked like that. And now it doesn't start at the top. Now, instead of doing that, what you might want to do is use page breaks, but page breaks can lead to issues as well. And are like this, where I have a page break here and then it starts on the next one. So I'm going to show you page breaks, but my advice would be to not have them until the end of your document when you're finished doing them. And then you can add them later on. What we're going to do to get a page break is go to layout and breaks and then choose a page break like that. And that will mean that it will always go to the next page. Even when we have some new information here, this will just always start on the same page. But what sometimes happens is that it starts with a page break and then you have this completely blank page. And that is one of the reasons why I avoid using them. Another thing in here is section breaks. The only one I ever use is next page. This can be useful if you want to, for example, have some of your document to be portrait, other to be landscape, etc. I have another video where I go into breaks in a lot more detail. But for now, let me show you, well, how do you find them? A couple of ways. In the home tab, you can click on this. And this can then show you where your page breaks are or where your section breaks are. If you, if I go to layout and breaks and section break, next page looks like this versus this is how a page break looks. Uh, so if you want to do that, that's really good. This will also show you dots where there are spaces, this symbol where you have a new paragraph and other things for bullet points and numbered lists and tables and things like that. So uh, this is useful. You can toggle it on or off with this or with the keyboard shortcut, control asterisk or control shift eight on most keyboards. Now, let me show you some cool stuff that you can do with advanced find and replace. So let's say you have lots of page breaks and you want to get rid of all of them. So you can click on replace from find and replace. It does auto populate with what you had before. So I'm going to delete that. And then you click on more. This has some useful options. So in special, I can say I want to find a page break and I want to replace that with a paragraph mark. So that with that. And then if I go to find next, it will find the page break or I can go to replace all and it will replace all of those. You also have here a section break as well. So you could do the same thing with that. Uh, there are some other useful things that you can do with advanced find and replace. For example, if you want to replace all the fonts, here I have some Comic Sans. I can find what I can go to format font and I can choose in font Latin text. I can use Comic Sans MS. Okay. And then replace with, I can go to format font and then replace that with Calibri in the drop down. Press OK. And then if I go to replace all, it will replace all of them in my document. Uh, remember that you need to click on no formatting to clear that. Uh, some other cool stuff that you might want to do is if you write have, but you wanted to search for has or had or other things like that, you can say find all word forms, and then you can find next, next. You can see it's has there and not have. So that could be quite good. Or you could say sounds like, and I can say bin, and I can choose sounds like, and I can say find next at the beginning of the document. Yes. So that's Ben Kenobi, bin, find next, bin, B-E-E-N. It will still find that. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that video. My name is Dave and I'm going to have tons of videos on Excel, Word, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, using tech of the workplace. I'm covering on my channel. Thanks for watching.